their United States Hot Rod Association Motorsports Extravaganza. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Kurtz, along with Mike Galloway. The site, as we mentioned, the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It looks like an excellent track, and it should be quite an extravaganza tonight. Bob, I think we've got probably the best program we've had all year long with the exciting Starting out with motorcycle jumping, Ed Beckley, Kansas Ed Beckley out of Kansas will be jumping some cars a little early in the evening. Four-wheel drive competition with the modified four-wheel drive. The track looks excellent. It should be a great round of competition in four-wheel drive. Well, the last show we had out at the Kingdom in Seattle, we were introduced to mud bog racing. More of the same tonight at the Dome. Oh, lots of mud bog racing and lots of very, very exciting big horsepower mud bog racing. We're going to see some of the vehicles come out and actually skip the top of the mud. They won't go through the middle of the mud or down in the, in the deep part of the mud. They'll run so fast, they'll go right across the top of it. Supercharged motors, outstanding action in the mud tonight. Well, you look behind us, and we have the pulling track for the modified trucks. It looks like an excellent track. Should be some good competition. Very, very good competition with two sets of pullers tonight, the four-wheel drives and the two-wheel drives. The track's in great shape, and the modifieds are here, the 6,200-pound and the 7,200-pound two-wheel drives. I tell you what, Bob, that should be a great class. I can't call a winner. It's going to be good. And we have the Battle of the Monster Trucks. Monster truck action looks great. Bigfoot's on hand. The loser goes out. The winner comes back for another round until we have a champion tonight. And the guys have got the guns loaded. They're looking for the Bigfoot truck, and it should be very, very exciting monster truck action tonight. Sounds like a great show, so stay with us. The Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Motorsports Extravaganza. Brought to you by Budweiser, the genuine article. Beats wood age for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. You just paid $10,000 for a new pickup. Your neighbor did, too. Your neighbor bought a door liner. You didn't. Now, which truck do you wish was yours? Without Duraliner? With Duraliner. Duraliner is so tough, it's guaranteed not to crack, split, or become brittle for the life of your truck. See your truck dealer. Duraliner. Call 1-800-D-Liners. I am Caledonian. I am British Caledonian Airways. I am the first-class way to London. I am a limousine that personally takes you to and from the airport at both ends of your travel to London, free. And in the sky, I am the airline with the finest and vintage wines in European cuisine. I am the first-class way to London. I am Caledonian. I am British Caledonian Airways. We never forget you have a choice. Yes! For everyone on the proverbial fast track, NEC introduces Multispeed, the world's fastest portable computer. Take the multi and run. If you're up against the old boy network, subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. You'll find that to achieve success, you don't have to be old. And you don't even have to be a boy. Call 800-228-1900 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-228-1900 now for the Wall Street Journal. The competition is intense. Two international volleyball powers show their strength when the USA battles Brazil in the Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel's Classic, Tuesday night on ESPN. Bob Kurtz, Mike Galloway, back with you here at the Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Motorsports Extravaganza. You're looking at 36-year-old Ed Beckley out of Dodge City, Kansas. Big Ed Beckley, and Ed is considered to be the world's largest motorcycle jumper. Ed outweighs his motorcycle by 60 pounds, and that's a Harley Davidson. Ed is going to attempt to make a very long jump this evening, probably the equivalent to about seven cars. Big Ed Beckley out of Dodge City, Kansas, and Ed's a, a professional at this. He's been at it for about 12 years, and he's done all sorts of long-distance jumps. And you know, for quite some time, Ed jumped with his wife, Linda, on the back of him. Ed and Linda jumped together, and Linda now is at home with a new child, and Big Ed is doing it all by himself. Well, Ed has crashed a few times. He said that uh, he has had too many crashes to count. He said he's broken enough bones, and they're mended together with enough metal that when he sets off the detector at the airport going through. Well... I want to tell you how big Ed is. It takes about three large cows to make the leathers for Ed Beckley. And he's one big man. 
world's largest motorcycle jumper. Watch him go to work. He's got quite a chore with him tonight. Big Ed Beckley. You know, he's lived in Kansas and Texas almost all of his life, and he's very much a professional. Made some very long jumps on this. But right now, tonight, riding as XR600 Harley Davidson Special. It's an experimental. Weighs 250 pounds, and as we mentioned earlier, that's a lot less than Big Ed Beckley weighs. Look at the star on the back of Big Ed. Here he goes. The big man out of Kansas. Going to take his attempt. He'll be jumping the equivalent of about seven cars tonight. And he's got a very short takeoff area. He's going to make a bend and swing around and then come back and get a shot at the ramp. And the most critical point of any motorcycle jump is the lineup like this one we're seeing right here. Ooh, and Ed decided we better wait just one more time. It's kind of testing the acceleration of the motorcycle, feeling it out, making sure that he's got plenty of throttle response. And, you know, when he leaves the ramp, he wants to have all the quickness of the throttle. What did you say the most critical part of the jump was, other than the landing? Other than the landings, when he, lead, when he comes around and makes his swing and lines up perfectly on that ramp. A big red arrow marks the direction and the lines that Big Ed wants to be on when he makes his attempt at the ramp. Now he's taking his first shot at it. He's lined up now. Let's see what happens. He's up, up, up. Oh, Big Ed didn't think it was quite right this time. What is he exactly looking to do? He wants the speed on the bike. The speed on the bike is very, very critical. You'd like to have the bike at about 48, 49 miles an hour when he hits the lower portion of the ramp. And right now, you know, he's making a swing. He's making a big circle and then coming in for the straight shot onto the ramp. When he's doing this in his test run, you'll notice that he's looking down at the the mile per hour gauge speedometer and looking to see if he can make it all the way over. Here he goes. Look out. He made it. He made it. What a jump. A tremendous, tremendous job for Big Ed Beckley. That's quite a show. It is quite a show. That's amazing that a man that weighs that many pounds can go over on such a small bike. Big Ed Beckley out of Dodge City, Kansas. And he's happy, and so is the crowd here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Here's a replay. Here's where Big Ed makes the swing. Now, he's looking down at the speedometer, got everything on go. He hits the ramp right there. All he can do is hold on and ride. There's the shower of fireworks. Big Ed almost overshot the runway. A good job, and all he's got to do now is get his hands on the brakes of that Harley and put it to a stop. We'll be back with more on the Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Motorsports Extravaganza after this. What you've just seen could happen to you. On the other hand, what you've just seen could have been prevented with solar roll shutters. We built them. Now it's up to you. Solar Roll Shade and Shutter Corporation. Harness fever. Everyone at Boyd Farm has it. In the boy's blood. Harness fever. The fever gets hotter when the farm's existence depends upon a young boy, a green coat, and the outcome of an exciting race. Let Teddy drive. He's never been in a race before. McGinnis will eat him up. He's got Boyd hands. I say let him drive. My father bought the mortgage on your farm. And if you lose, it's out. Catch the harness fever with Walt Disney's Born to Run only on the Disney Channel. It's the world's roughest sport, and it's here on ESPN every week. Catch all the wild and woolly action of Australian rules football every Wednesday at 5 Eastern only on ESPN. Here's Dave Billingsley out of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, disorderly conduct. The tire competition, mud ball racing. These are street tires that have been cut to the driver's specification. Uh, Dave's the first man to go in a pit as a 700 horsepower Chevrolet motor moves it right to the line. Here's one thing you want to watch on Dave. He actually will not run through the pit. He will run on top of the pit, or he hopes to run on top of the pit. He'll leave with it, runs nitrous oxide on it. He'll mash the button. The power goes in. Watch him go on top. He's not on top, Mike. He is not on top. He left, skipped about halfway, and just didn't have the power to go all the way through. 
Here's Dan Zemet out of Shoreview, Minnesota in Kodiak. This is a very good looking late model Jeep, stretch wheelbase on it, cut tires all the way around and watch for the Kodiak vehicle to put some distance between he and the starting line because this is one of the vehicles that you're gonna see run consistently at the front of the class. Here's a young man that's not the first time in the pit for him. Look out, he's headed out. Look at that! He did the full 90 feet. We're talking quick. And there's a young man that's very, very excited, and I don't blame him. Take a look at the mud vehicle. He actually went through the pit so quick, the mud didn't land on the vehicle. He drove underneath the mud and kicked it up in the air, went underneath it. There's a very fast vehicle called Kodiak. Dan Zimmett out of Shoreview, Minnesota. What's this whole shot as he leaves the starting line? Front end up in the air, all the traction in the world, and Kodiak is right on top of the mud, skipping the light, fantastic, as he goes right out the end of the 90-foot, a beautiful pass. We'll get a time on it. Of course, if you go all the way through, no getting stuck or stopping anywhere in the pit, it's a time situation. A great pass for Kodiak. Watch out! That's Quagmire, driven by Tom Berg from North St. Paul. What are you talking about? Quick! That young man just cut a trail that was unbelievable. The Dan Zimet of Shoreview, along with Tom Berg of North St. Paul, have gone the full distance, and now we're into a time situation. Had it just a little bit wild on the big end of the pit, but held control of it, shut it right out the gate. Bounces a little bit on the end, but he retains full control of it. And jumps on the brakes and shuts it down. A beautiful job. I mean, a tremendous job. Big horsepower coming out of that little lightweight mud racer. Well, they're all freshly scrubbed and clean now. They're an interesting design, these mud racers. And before the competition, Mike Galloway took a look. Thanks, Bob. This is the legend. 2,400 pounds of mud racer. Supercharged Chevrolet motor, stretch wheelbase. The ride is outstanding in this track. The mud is quick. The vehicle is quick. 1,500 horsepower, a stretch wheelbase. It should be really exciting. You sit down inside a roll cage. If anything was to happen, you've got all the protective mechanism to keep you in place. This should be one of the wildest rides here tonight. Two classes of mud racers on hand tonight. One of them's the tractor class, and the other is the 44 and under DOT tires, cut tires. They're the Department of Transportation recognized tires, but the guys have cut the tires in a design that they think will best suit their needs tonight. Now this one's got the lugs cut out of it. it. Enables the tires to spin through the mud, but it clears the mud out of the tire each time the tire goes around. So when the tire comes around for the next time, the next traction, it's clear of the mud, the bite's there, and it goes quicker through the mud. You know, this is gonna be one of the quickest mud racers in the class. Let's watch for him tonight. This is the legend out of Cedar, Minnesota, driven by Mike Keeney. This should be one quick racer. Supercharged, big block Chevrolet. This young man's probably pounding out about 1,700 horsepower out of this vehicle. It's an all fiberglass body stretch wheelbase. He's got to run. Well, he got off to a slow start and then just sunk in the mud. One thing about it, just kind of from the shot we're looking at right there, he said nothing about the name of that vehicle on the path. Now, one thing to kind of watch when he left the starting line on that pass, watch the front tires as he leaves the starting line. They're turning, but right about there, they begin to let up a little bit. He's trying to do it all with the rear tires and trying to skip the top of the mud. Also, he's leaned out one side of the motor and has some problems and does nothing but plow him right into the middle of the pit. There's Don Nelson now in rage. This is a brand new 1986 Ford Bronco mud racer. I'll tell you what, it's got a big block Ford in it, stretched wheelbase. It could be tough. Has a little trouble on the starting line. Watch out. Now, trouble on the starting line usually means you're going to get about a quarter or a halfway in, and that's about it. When he nailed the throttle, the tires just lit up in the mud, and the traction absolutely was not there for the rage tonight. Here's Mule Mule. Gary Banizensky out of St. Paul, Minnesota, the Mule Mule. So that's the third mutter now to go full in the cut tire competition. And again, 2.85 seconds. 
by Kodiak so far is the time to beat. Here's the Blue Mule. Made a full run, as we mentioned, but uh, 3.4 seconds, which leaves him behind Kodiak, which finished at 2.85. There's Steamboat Willie. Bill Rupert out of South St. Paul. This is another one of the ultra quick super light machines in this cut class. Watch this young man go to the track because he needs to go quicker than a 285. 285, Kodiak in the lead. Steamboat Willie's ready to ride. Waiting on the green flags. All he needs. Got it in gear. It's time to go to work. Watch him. He needs to go all the way out. He needs to skip the top. He's off. Steamboat Willie. Now, did he do it in 2.85? I don't think so. You've got a better judgment than I have because I'll tell you what, I couldn't get it. Watch him leave this starting line. He's got the traction this time. Leaves hard. Watch the front end come up. Now, he's not in the pit. He's running right across the top of it, much like you'd skip a rock across a lake. And all he does is skip that big vehicle right out the finish line area, and we'll wait on the stopwatch measurement. It gets a little rough landing one of them on the finish line. Bill Rupert out of South St. Paul, Minnesota. Stay tuned. More action in a moment on the Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Motorsports Extravaganza. What you doing? Me and Daddy are putting new brake shoes on his car. But cars don't wear shoes. Brake shoes, honey. They stop the car. We always use Guardian brake shoes, don't we, Dad? Nothing better. I learned about Guardian from my dad. Nobody makes brakes better than Guardian, and nobody makes it easier. Can I have new Guardian shoes, too? Safe stop start with Guardian brakes. I watch it was 9.31, so I called my daddy, said, let's have some fun, and we rode. Right now, it's rocket rebate time at your Honda motorcycle dealer, and that means it's time to roll up big savings. You can save $100 to $1,000 on selected models. Apply these savings to your down payment or get cash back from Honda. The choice is yours, but hurry. Honda's rocket rebate is good for a limited time only. Rolling from the break of dawn. Moving now to the tractor competition and the mud bog competition. This is Blue Mule 2. The big difference in these two vehicles is actually the tires themselves. Now, as you can tell by looking at Blue Mule 2, this is an implement tire. This tire was never meant to run on the road. This is an off-road tire only. It's an implement tire. It's got the tractor-type lugs on it. They're much taller than the tires that we saw in the earlier classes. A lot of times you'll find these vehicles have more weight in them. They'll have a little bit more problems getting through the pit. Let's see what happens in this tractor class. He's right on top of it. He's churning the ground. Churning, but he's going to come to a messy end. Take a look at a replay here now. You know, with these tractor tires, a lot of times the racers can't get up on top of the mud pit. They have to run right down through the bottom of it. You're going to see a lot of the, the bigger, taller implement tires in this class, and they're actually going to churn right through the middle of the pit, but you're also going to see some very fast times come out of this class. You're looking at the Green Weenie and Meyer out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. This is a modified Jeep, runs the tractor class, big V8 engine underneath the hood of the Green Weenie. Got his windshield wiper squirting a little fresh water on it. And when he gets down in that pit, he's going to definitely need that extra to clean off the windshield because, you know, a lot of times you hit that pit, you hit it real hard, real fast. The mud comes right up on the windshield, and it just makes it absolutely impossible for these mud racers to see where they're going. Out of bounds is the disqualification. We are in the tractor competition now in the mud bog racing. Ryan one out right on the bottom of the pit if he makes it all the way through, and Ken's going to try his best. He'll need that uh, windshield fluid again, too. Wasn't in the cards for the Jeep tonight. Here's a shot of Ken when he leaves the starting line. He's trying to grind it out, knows there's not enough speed when he hits the pit, so he's just going to have to grind it out on the bottom of the pit with the green weenie, and that's exactly what he's trying to do right there. The truck goes down, the mud is just really coming in on him strong, and he is having a problem cutting through the pit tonight. Here's Thundering Buffalo. 
Bob Kennedy out of North St. Paul comes close but falls shy of the 90 foot mark. One thing about the Thundering Buffalo is you get a shot of it. Big Dodge truck. The motor is kind of mounted in the middle. You're looking at the Cannibal, which hails from Cambridge, Minnesota. Scott Rosenberg is the driver. 428 cubic inches of Cobra Jet Ford setting under the, the body of the Cannibal. Notice the tractor tires, and Scott's getting ready for the ride of a lifetime as he heads out of the tractor class. He'd like to run the pit. He can be the first man to go all the way through in this tractor class. Let's see what happens with the big Cobra jet motor as he gets ready to pound the ground in the beautiful Ford truck. Jet black with the gold trim. Scott Rosenberg from Cambridge, Minnesota. Here's a lightweight truck with a tall, thin tire on it that may be able to trip the mud and go all the way through. One of the best runs so far in the tractor competition, still shy of the 90 foot mark. Looks like he may have bettered 70. Now, where do they mark that from? The front tire, the back tire, or what? They're measured to the center of the front tire, the center of the hub on the front tires where the measurement on the mud track comes in. So he should be right about 70 feet. It'll be real close. Watch him leave the line with this cannibal truck. As he turns the tires real hard, trying to make it all the way through the pit. Beautiful job as he's got the motor wide open and it's nothing but horsepower and strain and gain this time around. Here's the mud hog now, driven by Tom Lindemann out of Oakdale, Minnesota. This is an older model army truck. Been converted over to run the mud races. Now, he runs a, a lot taller tire. This is probably the taller tire that we've had so far, the Mud Hog. Watch him go to work. $8,500 invested in the Mud Hog. And one thing the Mud Hog needs to do tonight is need to hog his way all the way through the pit. What a great name, you know, Mud Hog. And you get it out and rattle around in the mud a little bit. Let's see if he can trip the light. Fantastic. Go all the way through the pit. Just 90 feet. Tire's an advantage. Just 90 feet. It's are the tires an advantage? The tall tires can help him with a real hit like we have here tonight, but he's going to have to work his way through. Got a lot of height, a lot of ground clearance. He's still inching his way through, and they won't flag him until he completely comes to a stop, which is right there. Interesting, because he got off to a bad start and pretty much powered his way through the mud. We just talked about the tires. He did not get a great jump off the starting line left the starting line just a little bit slower than normal and this is very possible because he he could have hit the nitrous button and when it did that it flooded the cylinders the motor wouldn't come up wouldn't come alive so it came down on him right there you see the motor beginning to pick up and he probably goes back on the nitrous button about right then and the motor just lugs down one more time and that time it won't come back up to the mud hog there's your measurement on mud hog 78 feet 8 inches well, here's the mud stud, driven by Norm Dorn. A little lightweight body with the tractor design tires on it. He's very possibly light enough that he can get up on top of the mud and run all the way through with the mud stud. 78 and 8 inches, the mark to beat. Watch the mud stud. This could change within a matter of seconds with this young man taking his time, waiting for everything to be right, building a little bit of heat in the engine, wanting the maximum horsepower, drops it into gear right there, and it should be a matter of moments before the mud stud launches through the pit. He goes the distance. First man to go to the distance in the tractor class. He's lightweight. He's got the horsepower with the big Ford motor and a beautiful job of driving all the way through the big heavy pit. That's the Mud Stud, Norm Dorn, the driver. Mud Stud launches hard out of the hole, and he's right down into the middle of it, just keeps the hammer down and goes for the gold. There's the 80-foot mark. He's beginning to come out of the pit right there. He knows he's taking the lead as he goes to a time situation. It took Mud Stud 5.49 seconds to go the full 90 feet. 
You're looking at Bob Swanson, who is from Stillwater, Minnesota, just north of where the Metrodome located here in Minneapolis, and he is driving the Caveman. CJ7 fiberglass bodied Caveman truck. Here's another man that's lightweight and very possible of going through the whole pit as we've started out with a tough class in this tractor class. Now, he's got some, some tall, thin tires on him. They've got a tractor lug, and he's going to have to churn them all the way through the pit. He'll have a hard time getting up on top with a tall, thin tire the way he's running right now. But watch him. He can do it. He's underway, and it looks good. Not for long. A little fire. A little bit of fire as it popped back and ignited something under the hood. And we'll see some guys go in and raise the, the hood and make sure the fire is out. OK, the guy on the right has the, uh, the hot dogs. And the guy on the left has the, there he goes. He's into the pit, onto the nitrous, and making some horsepower. Trying on the left-hand side of the pit, gets in a little bit of trouble, backs out as he's close to the line, and when he backed out, the pit just sank him to the bottom, and then too much, too late. Here's the master mutter, Rich Young, out of Friar Lake, Minnesota. This is a Chevrolet Blazer that's made for one thing and one thing only, and that's go quick through the mud. Watch out. He did it. Now the question is, did he do it in less than 5.49 seconds? You've been the authority, what do you think? I think he did. I believe so. He was one quick pass through the mud with the master mutter. That in all probability is our new leader, the master mutter, Rich Young on a prior lake. Look at this, Rich as we talked about, is on the throttle right at the starting line. Got his hands full of driving chores. It's tall. It sets up off the ground. He's got plenty of ground clear clearance. He's got the power to go all the way through the pit. The mud flies, and one thing about it, Rick is looking for that finish line, and as he starts out of the pit, he knows he's home free. Right there, he lets out of it, eases it out of the pit, just waiting on a time to see if he's captured the number one spot. There's your time, 4.32 seconds. So the winner is the Master Mutter, written by Rich Young on a Prior Lake, Minnesota. Here are the results tonight in the mud bog competition. First of all, in the cut tire category, Quagmire the winner in 2.67 seconds, then Kodiak, Blue Mule going in 3.04, then two tractors went the full distance. Master Mutter the winner in 4.32 seconds, Mud Stud 5.49. You just paid $10,000 for a new pickup. Your neighbor did, too. Your neighbor bought a Duraliner. You didn't. Now, which truck do you wish was yours? Without Duraliner? With Duraliner. Duraliner is so tough, it's guaranteed not to crack, split, or become brittle for the life of your truck. See your truck dealer. Duraliner. Call 1-800-D-LINERS. This spot's for all that you do. It could be any time now. No, Bill had to leave. Can I help you? A friend is counting on you. We need copies by 4.30. I'll cover it for you. Not a word. You keep on coming through, cause you make America work, then this spot's for you. Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This spot's for you. Billy Martin may be back in Yankee pinstripe. The latest news. Oklahoma and Nebraska are tied at 21 with a minute remaining. Scores updated every five minutes. Jack Nicholas has just won the match. The biggest stories, the fastest scores, just a phone call away all day, every day. ESPN Dial Sports, 1-900-976-1313. The numbers for scores, headlines, and ESPN program information. ESPN Dial Sports, 1-900-976-1313. Bob Kurtz and Mike Galloway under the big top. That HHH stands for Hubert Humphrey Metro here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And that roof you're looking at is sort of a Teflon coated material that is held up by air. A lot of air pressure here, so if you open the door on the way out, you can just about get blown right through the front door. It's one of, uh, well, actually, there are a few of these around the country. The one uh, probably best known is the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan 
which has just a single roof. They have two layers here in Minnesota to help melt the snow a little bit better. It is the home of the Minnesota Vikings, of course, of the National Football League. Minnesota Twins, which play in the American League and Major League Baseball. They have pro basketball coming here. And, of course, tonight we have our motor sports extravaganza. Well, if this was halftime of a Minnesota Vikings football game, we'd be getting ready for the band. Halftime of mud ball racing in uh, tractor pulls. What are they doing? Putting beach balls in the mud. Each beach ball is numbered, and the number corresponds to a prize. And there'll be a number of people line up and race into the mud for the beach ball. I know how sloppy that track is. It'd have to be some mighty nice prizes for me to go in. That's the deep end of the pit. The pit is probably four and a half or five foot, well, let's call it four and a half foot deep right there. Any on chance the end. we can lose anybody? <laughs> I think they need little flags tied on the top of them so we can find them when they get in the pit. All right, they're ready to go. Well, we had a false start. I, I forgot one little minor detail. Just one little detail. They're Could we please have the blindfold? Blindfold them. For our contestants. You know, Bob, it was a good idea, not blindfolded, <laughs> but blindfolded. This could get very nasty. On your marks. Here we go. Set, go. Come on, Blondie. Oops. Ushy, gushy, squishy, gushy, dirty, rotten mud. There's, there's a cap. There's one winner. Who's was the guy they could see? Well, now, ho hopefully he wasn't that way. The lady has a problem. Now, that, what, there's number two. We've got two winners. And the one man just raced past all the beach balls. Great way to spend a Saturday night, huh? It's enjoyable. A lot of fun, a lot of relaxation in the mud racing. Young lady's taking her time. She knows that... Whoops! Lon's gonna win yet. She's got one. I believe she's got one. If she had just lunged forward. She's got it. She didn't want that one, though. She wants another <laughs> one. And so it goes here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We'll be back for more action, so stay with us. Strength, pride, tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdale has been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste that only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste. Because this Bud's for you. The Upset of the Week is brought to you by Pepto-Bismol. For most common stomach discomforts, the one that coats is the only one you need. The Birmingham Turf Club, hoping for some Kentucky Derby hopefuls in its inaugural Alabama Derby. The favorites, Phantom Jet, Fast Forward, and Home Builder. Beating them all to the wire, Lost Code. Lost Code not even nominated for the Triple Crown, ineligible for the Derby, but winning the mile in an eighth in 151 and 3. 1760 for your two bucks at the track. The Pepto-Bismol Upset of the Week. Tomorrow is homecoming, and this campus will be filled with parents. But today, Jane's dad is coming home with a bad case of diarrhea. I feel so weak. Oh, let's get you into bed. Tomorrow's homecoming. You won't miss it. The one he needs is Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it soothes heartburn and upset stomach, as well as diarrhea. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> oh, me too, honey. Pepto-Bismol, the one that coats, is the only one you need. For everyone on the proverbial fast track, 
NEC introduces Multispeed, the world's fastest portable computer. Take the multi and run. Imagine being named the world's best at what you do. The Mr. Olympia competition crowns bodybuilding's most disciplined and dedicated men. Sunday night at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. Well, we move now to the two-wheel drive truck competition. You're looking at the Steel City Shaker, Bob Zundell, out of New Alexandria, Pennsylvania. These are supercharged two-wheel drives. They cannot run taller than an 18-4, 16-1 tire. Bob Zundell out of Pennsylvania with one called the Steel City Shaker. It's a supercharged Chevrolet. This should be a dynamite class. Good run for Bob Zundell out of New Alexandria, Pennsylvania, but he'll wind up a bit shy of the full pull. An excellent run for the Steel City Shaker. All right, Bob Zundell leaves the starting line in good shape, and it's nothing to do then but hammer down on that 1,500 horsepower Chevrolet motor. You notice the front end coming up in the air, bouncing along, just touching the ground, and that's perfect balance. Front end coming up right there, showing all the traction. And the truck putting some weight transfer on the hitch and a beautiful job for the Steel City Shaker. These are truly an outstanding and very exciting class. I'm with two brand new 1987 Ford trucks. The one on my right, a $20,000 street truck. Air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, AM, FM stereo, and all the niceties. The one on my left, an $80,000 pulling truck. 628 cubic inches of fuel injected forward, two and a half ton axles under the front and rear, an all custom drivetrain. Suited and built for one thing, and that's to hook to a 50,000 pound sled. The one on my right, all of the street equipment, capable of driving on any highway or country road with all the comforts of home. Why do they do it? They do it for the sheer power and the sheer competition, for this is what pulling's all about. Looking at the Orange Blossom Special 2, driven by Alan Gaines out of Georgetown, Kentucky. 1987 Ford Ranger XLT has a full, complete stock interior in this truck. Supercharged 572 cubic inch Chevrolet, and it's called Orange Blossom Special 2. Alan, one of the original two-wheel drive people with the original Orange Blossom Special, and right now he's going to do battle with OBS, Orange Blossom Special 2. He's out of Georgetown, Kentucky. He's a tobacco farmer by trade and profession. Here's a man that could very well take it all the way out. He could go the full ball. There he goes. just a little bit when the front end came up, but it was still enough to give him the full pull mark for Allen Gaines. Here is Telstar, Bob Bauman out of Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, the driver. Bob runs a supercharged, low-riding S15 and a, a fine truck. Bob runs a supercharged, alcohol-burning S15. It's a low-rider, and he's in the race for the national championship in this two-wheel drive class, one calls Telstar. It's a 470 cubic inch supercharged Chevrolet engine. And he's gonna need it because he's gonna have to go the full distance. Alan Gaines, the leader in Orange Blossom Special 2 well, now, in our two-wheel drive competition. If Bob Bauman goes the distance, if he goes with a full pull, then he will come back and first Alan Gaines in the pull-off. Only the vehicles making a full pull, be it one or five, come back in a pull-off. up shy of the full pull. 
You know, Bob, the weight transfer machine is transferring the weight up the ramp and going all the way to the top much quicker in this class than we've seen all night long. Not only that, but they have added 3,000 pounds to the pan on this class. It helps the traction. They get a little weight transfer. The front end comes up a little bit, and it is a wild and exciting class, the two-wheel drive. There's the Oklahoma Warriors. in the Oklahoma Warrior. Ken Ewan out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma with a 572 cubic inch Chevrolet motor. Doing his best, but just not finding enough traction tonight to put him out. Here's Ken Ewan out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He rolls with the sled quite some distance before he actually opens the butterflies up. Maybe just a little bit heavy on the front end. Could have used another 100 pounds on the back. Front end not coming up transferring it to the back and giving him the kind of traction he needs to put the sled out the end. A little telltale sign coming out the bottom of it. This may have built too much heat in the motor. Looking at Bill Romsberg, who hails from uh, Pennsylvania. This is the rice burner. Alberton, Pennsylvania. It is a 1986 Toyota with a supercharged 500 cubic inch Chevrolet motor. Here's a man that's just getting into this two-wheel drive class. This is about his third time out, and he has really shown the guys the way to the winner's circle, as he's really been doing a great job with the rice burner, a Toyota with a big block Chevrolet in it. He's going to have to do a great job tonight, as he's got to go full bull to match the distance laid down by Allen Gaines. Orange Blossom Special 2 going the distance. We'll see what the rice burner can do here. Balance very critical in this two-wheel drive class. Doesn't sound right. Motor problems. As the engine leaned out as he left the starting line, about 50 foot out, the motor leaned out, the power went down on it, and there wasn't enough power to put it out the gate. Only full pull in the two-wheel drive competition. Orange Blossom Special 2. Allen out of Georgetown, Kentucky, the winner. You're concerned about your family's safety, so don't just stop at buckling the belt. A safe car has safe tires, and Cooper tires have the selection you want. The Ansonia Tire Center family wants to keep your family safe in all kinds of weather. Their all-weather Cooper tires are known for their strength and durability. Cooper Tires and the Ansonia Tire Center. Let our family take care of your family. Ford Bronco, Chevy Blazer, look out! Jeep dealing days are here. Buy that Jeep you've always wanted today. Now Jeep Cherokee, Cherokee Limited, and Wagoneer 2.9. Annual percentage rate are up to $700 cash back. Now Jeep Comanche four-wheel drive pickup. 2.9 annual percentage rate are up to $700 cash back. Now jump into Jeep Wrangler. Buy today and save big. Jeep dealing days today at your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Renault Jeep performers. The right guys. Well, Daddy Art is not here. Dusty is not here. We don't have the modified tractors here at the Metro Dome tonight, but we do have the Kamikaze, and here is Tim Arfons out of Akron, Ohio. This is a GE T58, and it's a turbine engine that's been converted over to a jet. Weighs 550 pounds. Timmy's been racing since he was 16 years of age, and he's been in all sorts of motorsports events. And this is probably the wildest creation that Timmy has ever came up with, no matter how you would look at it. This is unbelievable. Calls it a 1987 Suzuki jet bike. Watch it. Oh, we saw it at Anaheim in one of our previous shows, and that had the crowd uh, gasping at the end. Now this the thing really takes off. There's a couple of loud booms, and then it takes off like a shot. You're going to notice a cord that's connected between Timmy and the bike. At any time, if Timmy comes off of the bike, it will shut the motor down. Of course, that's a heck of a time to lose the motor, but it'll shut the engine down and, and hopefully let everything stay in control. Timmy will just pop it a couple of times and ease out on the brake a little bit. 
You know, he still to this day has no idea exactly how fast it will go. Pressurizing the fuel system, getting ready to light this jet up on Kamikaze. But he won't be able to really turn it loose here tonight at the Dome because he doesn't have a real entrance way. So all he really needs is a door at the end of the arena where he has some place to go to. But that's not the way the track is set up here at the Dome. And a long runway. Timmy runs a uh, set of four-inch parachutes on the back of this little jet bike to shut him down. This is unbelievable. Took six months to build operates at 27,000 RPM. There's the fire! The Jet Kamikaze. World's fastest ATV. Quad racer. Jimmy is definitely cleaning the track off. Watch him as he gets ready to jet pop. Turns the afterburner on. Look at that. Uh, the brakes actually not holding it as the power is coming on. Fives are down. Timmy's getting ready to air it out. Making one final adjustment before he turns the jet bike loose. You don't think that thing would take off? Would that be nice? On and off the throttle for just a matter of seconds. An unbelievable action for Tim Arfon. You almost don't have enough track here at the Metrodome to really get the full impact of what that thing can do. You know, I'm wondering how much room he's going to have to have the day he opens it up from... Pops it loose right there. Timmy is on it. The afterburner's wide open, and Timmy's headed down the track, jumps off of the throttle and easing out of it on the brake, shutting it down. Quite a ride and quite an experience. Kamikaze, Tim Arfon. Earlier tonight, Mike Galloway and I watched the four-wheel drive modified truck pull competition, which is all part of this great evening here at the Metrodome. Here now are some of the highlights and tonight's winning pull. Baby, baby, you can read the side of the truck there. This is Wyman Travis. He is from Iowa. He has 125 feet and a half to beat. Wyman Travis runs a 526 cubic inch wedge head Ford motor, fuel injected alcohol engine. He and his wife traveling all over the United States, pulling with this beautiful maybe baby truck, 700 horsepower, and a very, very tough Ford truck. Now watch Wyman, he's a man that's very capable of putting that 125 foot mark behind him and several feet in front of that. Let's see what he does as he rolls the slack out of the chain with this beautiful bright orange maybe baby. 150 foot track here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. 125 is the mark to beat. Maybe may well have broken the 125 foot mark. Wyman may have gone to the lead. He had a good number tonight. As each puller comes in and register for competition, they draw a number out of the hat at the registration table, and that's the order, order that they go to the sled in. Well, here's Wyman. Now, watch Wyman as if the tires spin just a little bit. Wyman finds the traction. He just eases it down. Right there, he hammers the big motor real hard. The 526 Ford. Motor comes to life and Wyman's on his way. All he can do now is hope for the best as he knows the weight transfer is getting heavier and right there it puts the halt to maybe baby. Here's Sarah Luckin now in Dusty Road. And that'll be right up there. Sarah has made a run at the lead here 
in the modified truck. Dusty Rose, Sarah Luckin out of Winger, Minnesota. One thing very interesting about Sarah, Sarah is truly involved in all aspects of this pulling truck. Sarah rolls out, she hammers the big Ford motor. It's a 620 inch Ford motor. And Sarah is headed for the door. She wants that lead. Now, one thing very interesting about Sarah Luckin is she is truly involved in this truck. She knows every aspect of it, every component that's gone in the truck to make it work. And Sarah is making the Dusty Rose work for her tonight. A beautiful job on Sarah Luckin in the 87 Ford XLT Ranger. 136 feet, four and a half inches. Well, Mike mentioned it was an excellent pull, and it's the leading pull so far for Dusty Rose. 136 feet, four and a half inches. Spud Jasky out of New Berlin, Wisconsin, in the Golden Ox. 575 cubic inches of all aluminum Aries engine underneath this Dodge body. Bud is a three-time national champion with the United States Hot Rod Association and a very strong competitor. Bud Jasky makes his home in New Berlin, Wisconsin, and he and his lovely wife run a trucking business. When Bud's not out on the road, when Bud's on the road, she takes care of the business at home. Bud Jasky is a man that can definitely make a winner here tonight. There you see the national champion signature in the window. He has 136 feet, four and a half inches. That is the mark to beat. Sarah Luckin is the leader at the moment out of Winger, Minnesota. The three-time national champion, Bud Jasky, takes his shot. And it's a full pull for the three-time national champion. That's why the man's a national champion. A beautiful job of driving. The truck never faltered one inch going down the track, and Bud Jasky had all the power it needed tonight to put the sled out the gate. The full pull for Golden Ox, Bud Jasky out of New Berlin, Wisconsin. And that's your current leader. Here's a replay now. Bud spotted the truck and the sled on the left-hand side. You see him drive it out right about there. He gets into the big Aries motor, and it's making all the power in the world tonight. And a beautiful job for Bud Jasky as he just keeps it all out on the line and blows it right out the gate. First man to do it, and I'll tell you what, a beautiful job for Bud and the Golden Ox. Modified truck competition this evening. Golden Ox with a full pull is the winner. Dusty Rose second, 136 feet, four and a half inches, followed by Black Gold and Roy's Toy. Be right back, Pop. This Bud's for all that you do. Hey, Pete. Come in. This year? Hey, my glove. I found out Pop worked overtime to pay for it. He was always knocking himself out to give us something better. Salutes everyone who's ever worked for more than just a paycheck. Thanks. I think that's my line. This bud's for you. Becoming one of the most feared middleweights in America. Undefeated Michael Nunn fights for his 15th knockout against Eddie Hall. Live Friday night at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Bob Kurtz, Mike Galloway back here inside the Metrodome. You're looking at Sampson, driven by Don Maples as we get ready for the monster truck competition. 1985 Chevrolet, 19,000 pounds, and he's up against the Duraliner giant, Kevin Dabney out of Tampa, Florida. Of course, Don Maples out of Huntsville, Alabama. This should be great. An 86 Ford against an 85 Chevrolet. It's a straight shot. Two sets of three cars. Two sets of three over the cars and then over another set of 
hills, and it's going to be great. Kevin Dabney, the Duraliner Giant, weighs 20,000. It's close. It's close. Dabney's in the lead. The Duraliner Giants in the lead. Maples is going to have to come from behind. Maples is going to have to come from behind, and I don't think he's going to make it. No, he's not. It's the Duraliner Giants. That's the winner. Kevin Dabney. The Duraliner Giant takes first round of monster truck competition. Well, they came roaring out of the starting gate at a very quick race. And Kevin Dabney and the Duraliner Giant out of Tampa, Florida is the winner. You know, Bob, that's got to be considered an upset here tonight because Don Maples was picked to be a winner, but if you look down as they, they pull back from the Duraliner Giant, there is some telltale signs that he may have broke something on the pass because it looks like he's got a trail of fluid falling out behind the Duraliner Giant. That may very well be transmission fluid. Take another look at the race. Well, it's heads up right there. Ken Donay drops the green flag and runs for the hill. Kevin Dabney covered him right out of the hole. He's first on the car. Sampson is flying high. Kevin keeping it down on the ground and just getting after it all he can. Don Maples running in a little bit of problem, but right there you see Sampson clearing the last set of cars, but it's too late as the Duraliner Giant has taken on first round of competition tonight in the monster truck races. We continue now with our monster trucks. This is the monster bet going against the Copenhagen Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher is here to win one tonight, and they're going to try their best. Jim Reese, the builder of the truck, is driving, and he is all over the track and all over the cars. He's got the monster bet covered by about four leaks, and he wins it and goes home in style. What a race. Well, the Skull Crusher, the winner, will advance to the second round. Wild Stank, Cliff Starbird at the controls, going against Frankenstein. Supercharged motor against an alcohol motor. Watch out, Cliff starboard has got the Mustang working. Off to the side, he's got to come around. We'll wait on an official judgment on that. But I believe Cliff Starbird Mustang is number one in this race tonight. Cliff told me earlier that he had broke a valve and he's only running on seven cylinders in the Wild Stang Mustang. Cliff's got both trucks, right? Cliff does own both trucks. Right here, flag drops, and Cliff is out on top. He runs a supercharged motor in the Mustang. He's out to win this round. He wants to advance. He owns both the vehicles. The Mustang's the new one. He flies over the first set of cars, lines it up, and tries to bring it around in time to catch that second get set, but drifts off a little bit to the right, flying hard and lands hard. But he's right on top of it, never letting out, and he's shooting for the finish line. And that's going to put Cliff into the number one spot. He told me earlier that he had a valve down, so he's only running on seven cylinders in that supercharged Mustang convertible. Well, we've got Bigfoot going against Sampson. Bigfoot, owned by Bob Chandler, driven by Jim Kramer and Don Maples back in Sampson. Don Maples, a supercharged 454 Chevrolet, and he's going up against Bigfoot, the supercharged 640 cubic inch Ford motor. Heads up and hammer down. This is the, the race of the year right this minute as Bigfoot takes on Sampson, and it's all Bigfoot tonight. Don Maples having problems. He can't even get close, but a beautiful job. Jim Kramer takes home another win for Bigfoot. Big win for Bigfoot. One thing about Jim Kramer, he is wasting no time when the green flag drops. He is just crawling all over it. He almost jumped completely over the first set of cars, the first three cars. He cleared them almost completely. He's on top of that second set of cars, and Bigfoot is here to take home another championship. And look at the lead that he has over Sampson. Don Maples doing a great job as he's putting the truck through its paces, but it just wasn't there tonight to capture this race. Bud Thunder, it's revved up and coming at you.
You just paid $10,000 for a new pickup. Your neighbor did, too. Your neighbor bought a door liner. You didn't. Now, which truck do you wish was yours? Without door liner? With door liner. Door liner is so tough, it's guaranteed not to crack, split, or become brittle for the life of your truck. See your truck dealer. Door liner. Call 1 800 D liners. Here's our second heat now in the monster truck competition. There's Bigfoot, a big winner in the first heat. He'll be going against the Copenhagen Skull Crusher. This should be a dandy. Oh, this should be great. Jim Reese driving the Copenhagen Skull Crusher. He's the builder of it. Jim Kramer, the driver of Bigfoot, probably none better. This is a race that has been brewing for quite some time. Not too many weeks ago, the Copenhagen Skull Crusher was racing Bigfoot. They went up over some cars. They crashed the front end out from under the truck, hauled it back to California, repaired it, brought it back this weekend to do one thing. They want to run the Bigfoot truck, and they want to win. Here we go for the championship, Bigfoot and the Skull Crusher. Uh, this is a race that's been brewing. These guys have been up against each other several times before, and it is always a real close race. We're just going to have to wait and see any one of them could win this race. It is all heads up. Bigfoot got the break out of the starting gate. Look at the Skull Crusher. He's coming back. Skull Crusher is going to go for it. They're all over the track. Can he do it? Bigfoot what a race. Home a win. Bigfoot got the break out of the starting gate. Skull Crusher appeared to catch up, and what a finish. I tell you what, Bob, I believe they spent as much time in the air that time around as they did going over cars. Watch the flagman as he runs out of the way. Bigfoot jumps on it right out of the hole. Both the guys come off with all four wheels just bouncing. Look at this. All over the cars, they're flying high. The Skull Crusher makes up a lot of ground right here as he jumps the car, lands very hard, and look at this, before it ever lands, he's on top of the other set of cars. But there's where Bigfoot gathers the ground. Bigfoot bouncing, he gathers it under control. Jim Kramer doing a super job. He knows there's about 50 foot to the finish line. He hammers that big rock forward and takes home another victory for Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot is still the champion. The reigning king of monster trucks, Bigfoot. The Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Motorsports Extravaganza. Brought to you by Budweiser, the genuine article. Beats with age for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. This program is a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of ESPN. Truck and Tractor Pull Championship. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we've got a whale of a show for you tonight. I'm Bob Kurtz, along with Mike Galloway, and it seems like everybody is here. Bob, it's going to be a great show. We're working on a 180-foot of track, and it's probably the best track in America. We're pulling a big sled, operates around 40,000 pounds, works through a series of gears and transmissions. Tractor class, we've got Dusty and Art Arfons, the twin jets of Art Arfons. They're going to be powerful. Dusty will be here, and she could definitely be a contender for the championship. And then we get into some wild and crazy monster truck actions. It should be a great evening with lots and lots of action. What do you look for in a pulling competition? We've got a lot of good pulling trucks here tonight from all over the country. 6,200-pound modified. The track's been good. They're going to have to really work for their money tonight. You talked about the Arfons. They always thrill the crowds. It's a 7,200-pound modified class, and it's going to be tough for the Arfons. They could be top contenders, but there's two or three other tractors here that you can definitely watch to be winners. And the monster trucks, that's what the folks pay the money for. Oh, the monster trucks are great. Four of the finest monster trucks in America. They should really put on a show for the people tonight. And we'll close it all off with the Budweiser boss. What can you say? Gary Collins, the Budweiser boss out of El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Probably the toughest four-wheel drive pulling truck in America. All that and more, so stay with us. This is the Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Truck Bowl Championships. Tonight's Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Championships are brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. You just paid $10,000 for a new pickup. Your neighbor did, too. Your neighbor bought a Duraliner. You didn't. 
Now, which truck do you wish was yours? Without Duraliner? With Duraliner. Duraliner is so tough, it's guaranteed not to crack, split, or become brittle for the life of your truck. See your truck dealer. Duraliner. Call 1-800-D-Liners. Washing the car, cleaning the windows. There are always dozens of outdoor cleanup jobs to do. Well, throw away that sponge, toss out that pail of soapy water, and say hello to Swirl On 2, the scrubber brusher with new Jet Blaster Power Cleaner. Attach Swirl On to your garden hose. Ordinary water pressure drives the brushes in a powerful rotating action that scrubs away dirt and grime, makes outdoor cleanups almost fun. Switch heads to the powerful Jet Blaster and hold on. Your garden hose is like a cleaning machine gun that blasts away stubborn mud and road grime. The gentle fanning tip gives the high-pressure nozzle a wide, soft spray to rinse and clean, safe enough for a luxury car finish. Now on this special TV offer, the complete Swirl On 2 cleaning system can be yours for just $29.95. Here's how to order. To order Swirl On 2 for only $29.95 plus $5 shipping and handling, call toll-free 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. For fastest delivery, use your credit card and call 1-800-544-1000. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A bold, rugged, outdoorsy scent. New Desert Spice. Leave it to Sure to add new spice to your life. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A light, baby-fresh fragrance. New Powder Dry Scent. Leave it to Sure to keep you powder dry all day. Civic Arena, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Bob Kurtz, Mike Galloway, all set now to move into the two-wheel drive truck competition. Starting off with Good Schultz out of Mantaway, Ohio. And this gentleman has something that there's very few of in America, and that's a supercharged Ford motor. Butch is a Ford fan from the word go. He runs a body shop in Mantaway. He's a perfectionist. The truck is absolutely perfectly straight, probably a lot straighter than when it came from the factory. Oh, even though they come from the factory extremely nice. This truck has just been worked to the inch degree. Then a beautiful black Emeron paint on it. Magnum Junior, Butch Schultz. A big, strong, supercharged 572 motor. And Butch is running right at the top of the competition on the championship in this two-wheel drive class. He's going to be somebody to reckon with tonight. Well, Magnum Jr. driven by Butch Schultz. Well, Butch does a great job. He drifted towards the left-hand line, and he can't touch the line and be out of bounds, burning off a little excess fuel. So he was burning it, drifting towards that sideline. He didn't want to back out of it, didn't want to touch the brakes because that'd lose some momentum. So he just went ahead and rode it just as far as he could, set it down right there at the last, and it was a nice run for Magnum Jr. There's your measurement now for Magnum Jr. to get us started in the two-wheel drive truck competition. One has been 80 feet, 5 inches. You're looking at Rice Burner, which is a Toyota. Bill Romsberg, or Bill Romsberg, out of Alverton, Pennsylvania. 1987 Toyota truck with a 516 Chevrolet in it. And this is an absolutely beautiful truck. Only Toyota body truck we have in this new two-wheel drive class. It is something extra. A brand new truck, been out about five times. Each time he comes out, he just goes further down the track, watching to be a competitor to win. Had a rough pull there. He did, he went towards the left-hand line, and there was a, a shear case where he had to touch the brake on the right-hand side to bring it around. And when that happened, the sled was already topped out and the momentum just absolutely took the footage away from him tonight. Take a look here, Mike. Watch on the two-wheel drive competition. Now, how fast that weight transfer machine comes up the sled. Well, these trucks weigh 1,000 pounds more than the four-wheel drive. The front end's up. Right here, Bob, you see him drift to the left-hand side of the track. He's turning the wheels, but that just doesn't do any good. And he touches down, hits the right brake jerks it around but look at the box it's already uh, topped out and the momentum is going for him that shuts the beautiful rice burner truck down see the rice burner coming up a bit short 154 feet four and one half inches well here's the west virginia kool-aid kid bobby johns who makes his home 
in Wheeling, West Virginia. Bobby drives a 1986 Chevrolet S10 with a supercharged 482 cubic inch Chevrolet motor. Before Bobby got into pulling, he was a bowler, a professional bowler for trade. And he's also been very active in drag racing for quite some time and now turns over to the supercharged class of the two wheel drives. And Bobby's a very fine competitor. Now he runs a little bit wider tire than you've seen in the other trucks so far tonight. This is a tire built by CPEC, especially for this class. Watch Bobby Johns, he's gonna ease into it. Strong run for the Kool-Aid Kid. Very good run for Bobby Johns and the Kool-Aid Kid. That blown Chevrolet motor is working, but he hurt the engine right at the, when he shut off. That motor had some problems. You see the smoke coming out of it. Look underneath it. There's a rod going out of it or something severe has happened. He has broken engine in the Kool-Aid Kid. Fortunate for Bobby John's sake, he did it at the end of the pull. Bob, here's a shot of Bobby as he's going down the track. The front end's coming up. Balance on the truck is just perfect. I mean, it's a beautiful pass. The front end's up a little bit, about three foot off the ground. Now watch Bobby as the weight box is on him. He begins to slow down. When the truck settles right about this time, right here, motor goes up and right there. See the sparks and the parts come out from underneath the truck. It was an expensive run for Bobby Johns out of Wheeling, West Virginia. I've got to go back, though, because I believe Bobby has broken a transmission, looking at the color of the oil on the track, and that is transmission parts. So Bobby Johns lost some transmission parts right there. And Hey, transmission, you're only talking about three or $4,000 to be back in business. Well, we have a new leader now in the two-wheel drive truck competition. The West Virginia Kool-Aid Kid is going 188 feet and four inches. That's better than eight feet, better than Butch Schultz in Magnum Jr. Well, we hope you're enjoying all the pulling excitement here on television from the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, but probably the best seat in the house is not the one you're sitting in in your living room at the moment. It's the guy driving the sled. That has got to be a wild ride. Mike Galloway went down and... Uh, found out what goes on back behind the sled. I'm with Daryl Allenbaum, the man that's got the best seat in the house, but he's not here for rest and relaxation. Daryl, it's work time when you do this. What, what are you actually doing back here on the back of the sled besides having a good time? Well, I control the sled. I can stop it if I have to, if something's wrong. You set the gears for each class, and then you run through the whole class. This is a motorized sled, so you can drive it back to the starting line. And there's a lot of things you can do with this sled that a lot of other ones you can. But Darrell, you have the controls at your hands. If something was to go wrong and you needed to shut a vehicle down or stop the vehicle, maybe it got a little wilder out of hand, you could do that, couldn't you? Yes. This button right here is a kill switch. That will shut the motor of the tractor off. These two levers here are the brakes of the sled, which I can stop the tractor with the brakes. These here two stop the box. Dale, it's got to be some wild rides going on out there. Do some of these guys take you on a pretty good ride? We've estimated we've had a police car sitting at the end of the track. We've gone through the 300 foot line 30 mile an hour behind some tractors. Well, that's got to be a wild ride. And Daryl Ellenbaum is going to take it all in tonight. Is this your stomach or this? Well, turn it into this, or this, with the Flab Blaster. It works to flatten and tighten your stomach so you feel younger, sexier, and oh, so firm. With each stretch of the power coil, you can feel the fat burning off, the inches melting away, leaving you leaner, healthier, and more attractive. For your upper abdomen or your lower stomach, nothing shapes your tummy like the Flab Blaster, and it's only $19.99. But wait! Order now and get a second one for only a dollar. You heard right, one dollar. That's two Flab Blasters for just $20.99. And they're guaranteed to bring results. Order yours now. Call 1-800-227-2113 or send $19.99 plus $3 shipping and handling to Flab Blaster, Box 121, Plainville. Order a second for only one dollar more. You get two for only $20.99. If you've ever thought of starting a business or if you already have, the Wall Street Journal could open some new doors for you. And more important, help keep them open. 
Call 800-372-3000 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. It's been called the most exciting three rounds in boxing history. Marvelous Marvin Hagler's slugfest with Thomas Hearns. Plus, the Hagler Ham Show rematch. Two Super Bowls, Friday night on ESPN. You're looking at Telstar, driven by Bob Baldwin. We saw his wife Pam earlier in the competition. Not this competition, but the four-wheel drive truck competition. Boy, this is a beautiful truck. Bob Baldwin makes his home in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, and it's a lowrider S15 Jimmy. Sets right on the ground, and the body work and the things that they've done to this truck is just unbelievable. Not a flaw in the truck anywhere. The back part of the truck has been widened. They've actually split the body and added a piece in the body to let it come out and set down over the tires to give it that beautiful lowrider effect. And, you know, Bob Bauman not only has a beautiful truck called Telstar, but this truck has really, really been running extremely well. He has been an absolute terror in this two-wheel drive class. And we can see if he could get up there around the 188 feet, four inch mark. Bobby Johns owns the lead. Let's see what happens as we get ready to run Bob Bauman's Telstar. This is a big supercharged 470 Chevrolet. Good run for Bob Baldwin. He had to fight the brake system there. Beautiful job. Bob drifted cross track, and the truck has a tendency to pull to the left. You notice he spotted the sled on the right hand. He spots the sled on the right hand side of the track, and the truck has a tendency to go to the left hand side. So he's trying to get as much track distance between the, the truck and the outside boundary. And right there, you see the truck start to the left hand side. Bob turning the wheels, but they're not doing any good. He's Holding on, he doesn't want to touch that brake. If he touches the brake, he knows the momentum's going to get him. Wait, Bach puts the nails to him right there, and we'll have a measurement from Bob Bauman on Telstar. Good run for Bob. Beautiful truck. 180 feet, 5 inches. We have a tie now for second place. Telstar, 180 feet, 5 inches. That ties the uh, Magnum Junior, and of course, they're still behind the man out of Wheeling, West Virginia, Bobby Johns in the Kool-Aid Kid. Here's the Steel City Shaker. Dave Zundel out of Alexandria, Pennsylvania, taking a shot at the 188-foot, four-inch mark, which is our current leader, Bobby Johns of the West Virginia Kool-Aid Kid. Well, Dave Zundel is the son of Bob Zundel. Bob has uh, been campaigning this truck all year long, and he's turned the driving chores tonight over to his son. Supercharged 440 cubic inch Chevrolet. And most of the trucks you're seeing in this competition run a truck type rear end with a set of industrial outboard planetaries on the outside edge of it. This truck runs a U Moline tractor type rear end, an old 1947 tractor type rear end, taking all the power it can give. Steel City Shaker comes up short. He had to go to the sideline. It was drifting across and a beautiful job for that young man. He's, he's just learning the pulling game, doing a great job. There's his father out there giving him a few encouraging words like, outstanding job, son. Here's Mike Hoff, who has driven exhibition vehicle earlier tonight, and now he is in the Blue Ridge Runner. Well, this is a brand new ride for Mike. He's only been out a couple other times with it. It's a 1986 S10 Chevrolet, a supercharged Hemi KB, a big Keith Black Hemi motor called the Blue Ridge Runner. Let's see if Hawk can put it on. Well, that mark of Bobby Johns of 188.4 is starting to loom larger as one of his big competitors, Mike Hoff, in Blue Ridge Runner comes up short. Mike standing tall, doing a great job, but as you mentioned, he's going to be a little bit short of that 188.4. Here's a shot of Mike as he rolls out with the big KB motor, easing into it, trying to build up a little ground speed, may have should have got into the motor a little bit earlier. You notice he's just now beginning to get into it. Injectors are opening up. They're flat. Front end comes up and truck here again. The track is pulling the 
the two wheel drive over to the left hand side and Mike's on the brakes right there holding it inbounds and that really killed the momentum on the truck. Well, Mike Hoff gets a congratulations from Bobby Johns or Bobby Johns gets a congratulations from Mike Hoff. Mike Hoff ends up at 168 feet, two and a half inches. And our winner of the competition, of course, the West Virginia Kool-Aid Kid and 188 feet, four inches, Magnum Jr. and Telstar tie for second. Then comes the Blue Ridge Runner, Rice Burner, and the Steel City Shaker. Among the regular sponsors of this event, we want to mention the people from Duraliner and Kendall Motor Oil and thank them for their continued support for these events. More polling excitement from a Civic Arena in Pittsburgh after this timeout. It's the beauty and splendor of Europe's oldest thoroughbred racing track. It's an international field of three-year-olds battling to prove themselves. And it's the people of Ireland who simply have a way of making a horse race magic. It's the Budweiser Irish Derby, Saturday, June 27th. It's the sport of kings and the king of beers, the Budweiser Irish Derby. I'd no sooner settle for a flake in my hair than a spot on my uniform. You, you pass the test, your good grooming. Has the look of success Your head and shoulders above the rest Regular shampoos just rinse flakes Head and shoulders goes to the source to help stop flakes And that's doing it right Your head and shoulders above the rest Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of jobs Jobs in management, jobs in sales, jobs in almost every profession so relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of high-paying jobs all across the country. So relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly has articles on job interviewing, writing a better resume, and how to succeed once you get the job. So relax. Pick up the National Business Employment Weekly at a newsstand or call 800-255-5000 and receive eight issues by first class mail for only $35. 800-255-5000, the National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. You're going to hear us talk a lot tonight about injection and superchargers. This is the injector butterfly and this is the supercharger. The supercharger is a, nothing but an air pump. It pumps air inside the engine, enable it to build more horsepower, and puts air inside of it and makes it burn better. These are the injectors. Up on top of them, three red spots. When you see the three red spots disappear, you know the man's wide open and on the fuel. Butch Schultz backs in, and this is a brand new 1987 Ford Tiempo body with a blown 500 plus cubic inch Ford motor. Butch is a body shop owner and a perfectionist. This is absolutely flawless automobile. For a fiberglass body, it is beautiful. The motor here again maintained by his young son, Butch Schultz Jr., 16 years old, and a great job. Here comes Butch Schultz, wheels up and hammer down. Look out. Tremendous work, beautiful job for Butch Schultz. Front end was up in the air and he carried it all the way to the end of the track. A fine exhibition run for Magnum Force out of Mantua, Ohio. Butch Schultz, a true competitor and a fine gentleman. Exhibition continues now with the Avenger driven by our friend Gary Collins out of El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Gary Collins runs a 1986 Ford Mustang with a supercharged all-aluminum Hemi engine tucked underneath that fiberglass body and Ray Ray backed him into the box. Gary's going to test the drive line out, make sure everything's in good shape. First shot of Gary, big man in a little car. And he's hammering down on the big KB, the aluminum key black. Ray Ray will back him into the starting line area, get him all hooked up, and here will come the Avenger, Gary Collins, a uh, farmer. In El Dorado Springs, Missouri, he and his lovely wife, Kim, and their children 
farming several acres there in and around the El Dorado Springs. In the wintertime, it's time to hit the roads and go truck pulling. Gary running an exhibition funny car tonight. He also drives one of the finest four-wheel drive pulling trucks in America in exhibition. Big Budweiser Boston. That, Bob, that's wild truck. Now, that is truly exciting. Green. We saw him make a heck of a pull with the Budweiser boss at our show in Anaheim. Let's see how he does with the Avengers. Here comes Gary. Watch him. Right to the end of the track. Gary Collins really put the distance on it tonight. A beautiful job with the Avenger. You're looking at the Chi Town Hustler. Mike Hoff out of Little Town, Pennsylvania, driving a Chi Town Hustler. This car's sister car was a national record holder in drag racing. Mike Hoff drives the Chi Town Hustler. Mike makes his home in Little Town, Pennsylvania. A blown Keith Black Hemi underneath the hood, and this is one fine competitive vehicle. Let's watch Mike Hoff. He hooks up to the sled and gets ready to go for the ride of a lifetime. There's a good shot of the injectors and the blower motor, the big pump sitting on top of the engine. See the distributor sticking out the side there and a big horsepower. These engines that Mike Hoff built, the aluminum key black motors, probably producing around 1,700 horsepower, running on alcohol. No nitrous oxide or nitrous methane allowed in this sport. Those are both oxygen-carrying fuels. Can't have any oxygen-carrying fuels. Aviation, alcohol, gasoline, the only fuels allowed in this sport. Well, Mike's all hooked up. He rolls the slack out for the Chi-Town Hustler. Let's see how the man does. He is Mark Tough. Green comes on the sled. Mike cleans the motor out real well and watch the front end go up on Chi-Town. Right down the length of the track. Bob, once the front end comes up and they're carrying the front tires up in the air, the only way that they have of controlling these vehicles are by individual rear brakes. And to touch the rear brakes brings them around just a little bit. Also lose a lot of momentum, so they want to stay off those brakes as long as possible. We'll be back with more exciting action. This is tonight's Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships. The Upset of the Week is sponsored by Pepto-Bismol. For most common stomach discomforts, the one that coats is the only one you need. Chichi Rodriguez was looking for his fifth consecutive win on the Seniors Tour Sunday. Rodriguez, Bruce Crampton, and Gary Player were locked in a three-way tie. Rodriguez finished tied and had to look on. Crampton then finished and both watched as Player sank this putt on 18 to avoid a playoff and denied Rodriguez his fifth consecutive tour title. Gary Player's victory over Chichi Rodriguez, the Pepto-Bismol Upset of the Week. Tomorrow is homecoming, and this campus will be filled with parents. But today, Jane's dad is coming home with a bad case of diarrhea. I feel so weak. Oh, let's get you into bed. Tomorrow's homecoming. You won't miss it. The one he needs is Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it soothes heartburn and upset stomach, as well as diarrhea. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> oh, me too, honey. Pepto-Bismol, the one that coats, is the only one you need. The best auto racing on television is on the ESPN. The drama of bumper-to-bumper -bumper NASCAR competition. The speed of Formula One leading to the World Driving Championship. Exciting IndyCar showdowns and thrills from USAC, IMSA, and super-powered dragster. ESPN's award-winning coverage takes you to five continents for the best live auto racing on television. The driving force in motorsports, ESPN. Hi, I'm Denise Austin. Join me every day to tone up and trim down. See how celebrities keep in shape and find out the latest on fitness. Well, we're getting ready now for the modified tractor competition. It looks like they're adding some weight to the box. They've added a couple of weights to it, and the weights are about 6,000 pounds each sitting in that box. They've added some more, and what they're doing, they're getting ready for this 7,200-pound modified tractor class. These are big horsepower tractors. They get the maximum traction. 
They've got to really be heavyweight on the sled. Bob Kurtz, Mike Galloway here at Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, all set now for the 7,200-pound modified tractor competition. We'll start with Rambunctious, driven by Milt Bergman out of Fort Recovery, Ohio. Well, this is quite a combination, Bob. As you see, sitting there on the line, Milt Bergman out in front, a B-12 Allison aircraft engine directly behind him, and then behind that, a 455 Oldsmobile. Milt Bergman takes it out of bounds. Well, Milt Bergman was bouncing on that one, Mike. Had to go to the right-hand side, got on the right brake, and one thing about Milt sitting out front, you can see exactly which brake he's on, which one he's off. Here's a man that will not ride the merry-go-round at the state fair, but rides this. Watch Milt. Takes his feet off the brake. Now, they're sitting right there beside the tires. Milt's relaxed. He's got the right arm all the way down. He's steering with the left arm, puts the left hand brake. See him shoving on the left brake, trying to bring the tractor around there. He lets out of it, shuts it down, gets on it again, and it's too late, Milt. 106 feet, 7 inches. Rambunctious went out of bounds, 106 feet, 7 inches on the pull. So it probably will not be a, a serious competitor for the championship. And you're looking at the Devil Buster now, Gordon Lutke out of uh, Ohio. Here's another strange combination with a V-12 Allison aircraft engine used during World War II in the fighter pilot and a 460 cubic inch Ford motor. Now, there's three tractors here tonight that's got the, the Allison V-8 aircraft engine and the automobile engine combination on them. And here's the one of them that's in the competition, Gordon just purchased this tractor not too many weeks ago and he's campaigning real hard throughout the nation. Let's see if he can put a run together tonight that will put him up in the lead mark. He's tough. Well, so far, the tractors are having problems with the weight transfer machine. Well, they added all the weight at the start of the class, and the box is heavy, the sled's heavy tonight, and the guys are really having a hard time getting any ground speed out of the hole. Well, here's Gordon, and he's got his right arm all the way down. That's controlling the throttles, and he's having a little bit of problems going to the left, corrects it, brings it around, but the sled's already transferring all the weight onto it. Gordon's fighting the out-of-bounds line and shuts him down right there. Not a great pull for Gordon, but one thing about it, it's considered successful. He drove off under his own power. Got a football game late in the season, you bundle up, you go sit in the bleachers for the baseball game, you wear your shorts, have a t-shirt you can take off and catch some rays. What do you wear to a truck and tractor pull? Truck and tractor pulling has a fashion all its own. T-shirts and blue jeans, kind of the order of the day. One thing about it, almost everyone here is a rolling, walking, talking billboard. All sorts of things, and they come in all shapes and all sizes. Well, it's a girl's night out. Honey, there ain't no doubt. I'm gonna dance every dance till the boys go home. Well, it's my night to rock. No watching that old clock. Oh, ain't no doubt, Lord, if it goes now. Show me the floor. You can give me a little rock and roll, or even a waltz with the lights down low. I'll still be dancing when they close the door. You just paid $10,000 for a new pickup. Your neighbor did too. Your neighbor bought a Duraliner. You didn't. Now, which truck do you wish was yours? Without Duraliner? 
with Duraliner. Duraliner is so tough, it's guaranteed not to crack, split, or become brittle for the life of your truck. See your truck dealer. Duraliner. Call 1-800-D-Liners. Stanley, we open doors all across America. Doors that open wide and welcome you inside. They'd open up to your special day. Doors that get you on your way. Stanley Doors for long and nice that bring you in when it's warm and dry. Stanley Doors for the quality of your life. When it comes to buying a home, most people go about things in a very strange way. In fact, they fall in love with a house before they know how much house they can afford. Maybe the last thing on your mind should be the first place you start. Talk to a member of the First Nationwide Network about home loans today. You'll get a handle on all your housing costs and a start in the right direction. Another beautiful Monday. Coast, the scent opens your eyes. Coast to lather, and you realize that coast is the way to make you feel alive. Coast, feel alive. <laughs> sure beats snow. Feel alive. Well, high-tech has come to tractor pulling, and this is Art Arfon's machine. And you'll notice right there by Art's right arm is a video camera, and it is pointed at the gauges. Art has several gauges on this vehicle, as it is a two-aircraft engine, and he does not have time to go down the track. There's four gauges that he needs to read simultaneously. And he's not been able to do this in the past, so Art has came up with the idea of putting a video camera on it. I asked him today, earlier this afternoon, and Art said it had been very successful. You know, Art Arfon, quite the inventor, and if anything can be done, this man can do it. Okay, there's a shot of the gauges, and those four gauges, right closest towards you, are the ones that Art needs to read simultaneously. Has not been able to do it, as you'll see when he goes down the track. He's got his hands full just riding the tractor and keeping his eyes on the track. So he's added another set of eyes to the tractor. He's added a video camera. High tech and tractor pulling. See the girl there with the dragon lady on the back of the jacket, that is daughter Dusty. She will also pull later in this competition. Dusty's turning the camera on as Art rolls the slack out. This is one of the, the vehicles they come to see at these competitions around the country. Keep your eye on the green monster. Art Arfon has really done it all. He has attempted to break the world's land speed record, been over 500 miles an hour. He's a champion in tractor pulling. He's highly inventive in this sport. He's got a multitude of ideas in his mind that he hasn't even used yet. Now, these are two jet helicopter engines. They're used on the big three-engine transport helicopters. He has them hooked up. And to start them, he used the 1,000cc motorcycle engine. That's the engine that's mounted directly behind him. It runs a hydraulic pump that moves him around to the sled and off the track. It also has a switch on it that takes the hydraulics and converts it from powering the rear tires to turning over the jet turbine engine. Probably the most critical part of any jet turbine is the starting period. This is why they've never been produced in the automobiles as a, a mass-produced engine because the starting period is so critical on it. That's what Art is doing right now. He's reading the gauges, waiting till the percentages come up. Each one of these engines operate at about 40,000 RPM. Your average automobile engine operates at about 6,000 RPM. So Art Arfons has got his hand full. There's the twin fires out of the twin-headed green monster. He puts his right arm on the throttle and let's see if Art Arfons can go the distance. Well, Art Arfons 
and the Green Monster has taken over the lead in the 7,200-pound modified tractor competition. Definitely churning the ground, turning the tires up close to the 100-mile-an-hour mark, having a little bit of problem locking everything in and burning off some excess fuel as he shuts the engine down. A beautiful job on Art Arfon's Green Monster. Burnt the banners off of the starting line. Look at that. The United States Hot Rod Association banner is history. All right, here's a shot of Art Arfons as he gets ready to launch the Jet Green Monster. Here comes the fire out of the hole. Arfons is on the power, and it is ready to ride for Art Arfons. The tire speed comes up instantly. One thing about the turbine engines is they have instant power, and Art has got the power. The tires are running close to the 100-mile-an-hour mark. Green flag is out, and he's got the sled behind him. All you can do at that point is hold on. Now, there you see why Art doesn't have time to check the gauges, because he's got all he can do is just holding on and riding it out. 149 feet, one inch. Well, our new leader, the Green Monster, 149 feet, one inch for Art Arfons and the Green Monster. Bill Leishner in the Dirt Slinger during one of our previous broadcasts. We saw him win the competition at the Riverfront Arena in Cincinnati. Tell you what, that wasn't the last one Bill won, and he has really been the man to beat in this class. Three brand new 572 cubic inch supercharged Hemi Aries engine. Mega dollars in motors, and you can see why when you see the dirt slinger hooked to the sled. A very appropriate name for Bill. Now, it runs 30.5, 32 engine. A very appropriate name in the dirt slinger for Bill. He runs 30.5, 32 tires. There's a shot of the three Aries engines. The two motors on the bottom are hooked crankshaft to crankshaft. The motor setting up top has its own clutch, so there's two clutches, three motors. They'll all come in simultaneously. And I'll tell you what, when it does that, he will shake the rafters and rattle the ground with dirt slinger. Bill is a, a farmer. Take a look at three inches. Is there, a, is there a limit of how many engines you can put on these? Things? Only a limit on the weight and the tire size. 7,200 pounds maximum, 30.5, 32 tires. Now, Bill has very little tread on the rear tires. He wants to spin them real hard. Doesn't want to pile a lot of dirt up in front of the sled. And that's why the lug is cut down the way it is. Watch this man thunder the roof. And here comes Bill. for the Dirt Slinger and Bill Leishner. That brings the crowd at the Civic Arena to its feet. Not only a full pull, Bill had the balance right, the power was there, a beautiful job. I tell you what, that guy is really super tough. He is leading in the race for the championship. Here's a replay, watch Bill as he comes with the sled. He eases it into it, even though he's got all the tire speed. Right there, he's wide open. Look at the violent shake in the tractor, the front end up just touching the ground, that's the way you want it. Pat it a couple of times, and Bill is headed for a full pull. Front end up, Bill's got it right between the doorways and says, I'll take it on outside, guys. Well, full pull for Dirt Slinger. He went the full 210 feet and then some. 210 and stretched another 50 on top of it. So wind up out in the parking lot. Now we have new and improved Rambunctious, also driven by Milt Bergman out of Fort Recovery, Ohio. You recall he drove uh, Rambunctious to start the class, and this is the new and improved. Milt's a professional puller. He runs a uh, twin Allison aircraft engine. The front motor, twin turbochargers, alcohol injected. Now the back motor is alcohol injected, both of them V12 Allison. Now if you go to counting cylinders, you come up with 24, the reason being has two intakes and two exhaust valves, much like a lot of the newer model cars have now, but this engine was designed in 1929 and went into production in the early 30s. Well, he has a big mark to shoot at. He's going to have to go the full distance to force a pull-off with Bill Leister. So Bill Bergman has his work cut out for him. Bill does, and he's last year's national champion with this tractor. He can do it. A 
behind Paul and good for second place, but obviously still shy of Dirtslinger. Mill did a great job and might have had just a little bit too much on the nose. Tell you what, Milt does a great job in pulling. He is a professional at it, and a truly a good competitor. Milt Bergman losing a lot of coolant out of the engine, the front motor. He very well may have broken a freeze plug or one of the plugs up on the inner side of the engine. Right here, you see Milt leave with the sled, and he's on his way down the track. Somewhere around the 100-foot mark, if you look to the right-hand side, right there, he starts to lose the antifreeze out of the front motor. Now, it's a plug or something, but he is losing all of it, and I'm sure the engine is building a lot of heat in it as we're injecting alcohol into the motor. The fluid is going absolutely all over the track, and it is a real tough break for Milt Bergman, even though he ends up with a good run. Do an improved rambunctious goes 193 feet one half inch, which would put it in second place behind Bill Leishner and the Dirt Sling. And welcome our next contestant from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mary Haney. Yes, you, Mary. This is your chance to enjoy a more colorful life by subscribing to TV Guide. Now let's show Mary what you'll get with TV Guide. To start, you'll receive complete listings for network, local, cable, and pay TV. You'll also get special features, movie reviews, a sports calendar, inside stories, and more. Okay, Mary, are you ready to go for it? Home audience, you two, join Mary. Get TV Guide. Johnny? Call toll-free 1-800. 932-1200 to get 30 weeks of TV Guide in your mailbox. 1-800-932-1200. Pay in three easy installments of just $5.75. Send no money. You'll be billed later. Call now. 1-800-932-1200. Congratulations, Mary. The subscription to TV Guide is yours. And here's Dusty, Dusty Arfon, the Dragon Lady. Art Arfons is daughter. Beautiful T-58 engine and the lovely Dusty sits behind the controls. Dusty in her full year of pulling now. Doing a great job. I tell you what, this young lady watched very soon to be one of the premier pullers in America. This tractor runs a considerably smaller engine than most of the pullers that you see in competition here tonight. It is a T-58. It's much like the helicopter engines that you see the news teams have so many places over the nation. Well, this is the type of engine Dusty has in there right this moment. She could be tough. She needs to go a full pull. That's what it's going to take to, to put her in a pull-off situation with Bill Leishner. Dusty Arfons out of Akron, Ohio. Uh, she is the only female tractor puller, right? She is the only female tractor puller on the, the circuit of champions with the United States Hot Rod Association. Pumping up the brakes, and she'll check things out, turns the light on, brings up the boost, waits for the power to come alive, and when the RPMs get up just right, Dusty will leave with it. Burns off a little excess fuel, ready to go to work. Dusty Arpon, the Dragon Lady. Now she's having problems battling the out-of-bounds marker on the right side and finally brings it up short. Dusty ends up on the short end tonight and won't be enough to put her up into the first place, but believe me, that young lady is going to be there very, very soon. Dusty Arfon's getting ready to go. There she cleans out the internal part of the turbine engine. She's ready to launch. Listen to the boost and the power come up. All of the air rushing out of the engine. Sounds There's like the an airplane just like an airplane and a, a turbine jet engine, it should. But Dusty's on her way down the track and immediately starts to drift to the right-hand side of the track. Dusty has to let off of it and get on the brake. Down to the last chance now for any of the tractors to overtake Dirtslinger. It's the Bionic Buzzard, driven by Jan Schmiesing out of Sydney, Ohio. And he'll have to go the distance to force a pull-off with the Dirtslinger. No one else is even close. Big alcohol, twin blown, or two blowers mounted in line. There's a good shot of the alcohol injected Allison with a 454 Chevrolet behind it. Jan Smeezing makes his home in Sydney, Ohio. Been in the pulling sport for quite some time. And 
he is going to be very, very tough in this class, but he's got a big mark to beat. Bill Leishner lays down a full pull. Let's see if Jan can bring the bionic buzzard around. Burning off a little bit of excess alcohol and clean the motor out. Horsepower comes up, dumps the front drive. of power and lots of noise, but not enough to overtake the dirt slinger. Good run for Jan. Could have used another 100 pounds on the nose to keep the front end down. When the front end comes up, the hitch goes down, and you lose power when you lose that hitch. But a fine run for Jan Smeejing and the bionic buzzard. Now here comes your winner, Bill Leishner. He's easing out right there. He hammers down on the three Aries motors. This is a picture-perfect pull as Bill is headed to the full pull mark. He crosses the full pull mark right there, and Bill says to give you a little extra just to make sure. Well, he won in Cincinnati, and he wins tonight in the tractor competition here at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh with a full pull of 210 plus. Then comes the new and improved Rambunctious, the Bionic Buzzard, Art Arfons, and the Green Monster, the Devil Buster, Rambunctious, and the Dragon Lady, driven by Dusty Arfons. Here's the butt boss, Gary Collins, out of El Dorado Springs, Missouri, at an exhibition here at Civic Arena, and this is one heck of a truck. Probably the most powerful four-wheel drive pulling truck in America, the butt boss, twin-blown Kim Timmy. Was there ever a doubt? The butt boss pulls the sled from one end of the Civic Arena to the other. Gary Collins showing the guys just kind of the way they do it in Missouri. And a beautiful job. The butt boss knocking a home run tonight. Outstanding job. There's Gary and he steps out of the butt boss. That is a one beautiful, powerful truck. Twin supercharged engines, probably 3,000 horsepower. The pulling competition here at the Civic Arena is history. It is time to crush some cars. What are they doing, Mike? Lining them up? It's called tightening the cars up. I, I think the man driving the wrecker at one time was a parking lot attendant somewhere. Uh, there's no competition as far as the monster trucks go here tonight. We're just going to crush them, huh? We're going to crunch a bunch. It, it's going to be but wild, Bob. We're going to see some super wild monster truck action in just a few moments. So the pulling is over, but stay tuned for the monster truck, says this is the Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Spring Championships. With every Budweiser enjoyed, the promise endures. The promise of genuine quality. Quality you can taste. Clean, crisp, Beechwood aged Budweiser. Always certain, always satisfying. Because we know you wouldn't have it any other way. That's why this Bud's for you. Impressive art of self-defense, an aggressive sport for champions. The most skilled international karate experts battle in one of the world's most demanding sports. Tuesday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Hi, I'm Denise Austin. Join me every day to tone up and trim down. See how celebrities keep in shape and find out the latest on fitness. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the Pirates, Penguins, and Steelers. And tonight, the city is playing host to the Ford Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships. I'm Bob Kurtz, along with Mike Galloway. Here we go with the monster trucks, the Duraliner Giant. Kurt Dabney out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, and he stands it right up on its end and right over the top of them. These guys are serious. He's broke a drive shaft. Look underneath the truck. The rear drive shaft is just flopping around, going everywhere. They're going to take him right on out of the arena. But there's a shot of that rear giant drive shaft just flopping. The U-joints broke on it. Got so high in the air that when it did, the U-joint, the drive shaft snapped in two. 
Tough break for the Duraliner Giant. He'll have to take it right on outside, back on the trailer, and home. Here comes Goliath. Twin supercharged Fords, one in the front, one in the back. Watch this guy. This is Alan Tura out of Warren, Ohio. He's going over. Oh, my heavens, right at the last minute. He landed it. He landed it. I can't believe it. He was up in the air and on his way over, and the truck came back to ground. Alan Tura out of Warren, Ohio, the twin-blown Goliath stood it right up on the rear wheels, and Bob, I thought it was history. Here's a replay. Goliath's got the hammer down on the twin-blown motors. Now watch him. He's high up in the air. It's all the way up in the air. It tilts to the right. And at the last moment, the front end brings it back down. Here's a lucky young man. A beautiful job of crushing cars with Goliath. Unbelievable. He's going to back up and try it again. He's going to do the back up, get up. Watch him as he puts it in reverse. He's got the, the truck ready to go. Each one of those tires and wheels weighs over 1,000 pounds. This is definitely not a vehicle you want to have a flat with on the expressway. Here he goes. In reverse right up on top of them, wild as you could ever see. That Goliath truck, the big twin blown Ford, he is putting the hurt to some cars tonight. What a wild round of competition. Goliath is doing an outstanding job. Twin blown Fords, and there's a good shot of Allen. He steps out of the truck, and tell you what, he has got to be shaken just a little bit after that first pass where it went all the way up in the air. Unbelievable. Beautiful monster truck and the guy's doing a great job with it. This is Don Maples out of Huntsville, Alabama. Here's Sampson. 14 foot tall. Watch the Sampson. Chevrolet launching. Unbelievable that you can see a 14,000 pound truck fly over the cars as Don Maples has done. He's ripped the hood off of one of them. Don's going to go. On. Hold on. Watch out. Look at that. Looks like a rocket as it just catapults up in the air. And Maples out of Huntsville, Alabama with his Samson one truck says, hold on guys, I want this competition. They're saying, no, no, don't crush them again. Hold up just a minute, the hood came off of one of them. Don Maples says, you guys give me the go, I'm gonna go over the top of them. Well, they put the hood back on as best they possibly can. Here comes Samson. He's gonna try to fly the group. There's not much left of them. Look out. Oh! Riding off the edge of them, Don Maples. Supercharged Chevrolet in Samson 1. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. We are seeing an unbelievable battle in the Battle of the Monster Truck. Here's Samson 1 high in the sky. Look at that. Clears all four wheels off the ground on this 13,000 pound monster truck. Skips over the top of them. Look to the Virginia Giant, Deal Wilson. Virginia Giant, this is a supercharged Hemi Ford motor. Makes his home in Winchester, Virginia. Here's Deal Wilson, the Virginia Giant, makes his home in Winchester, Virginia. Watch the Virginia Giant. Look out, flying. A Deal Wilson doesn't have a whole lot left to work with. These other three have just destroyed the cars. They're about two foot tall at the current time, but Deal Wilson's going to make the best of it as he's going to really go for it. Back up, get up. He does one of the better wheel stands in reverse. Look out. Motor loaded up on him a little bit. He got high in the backside of it. The cars are scattered all over the arena floor, and Deal Wilson in the Virginia Giant is saying, give me more. Give me more. This is a beautiful truck, a supercharged Hemi Ford motor. 
underneath the hood. There's a good shot of Deal. He's got to be a little bit excited about the ride that he's been taking tonight. Checks the rear tires, make sure they're straight. Front and rear steering on both of them. Hold on, hold on, look at there. Flying over the top of them. All four wheels, there was daylight underneath the tires when Deal Wilson launched that truck up in the air. Look out, he's gonna go in backwards again. Unbelievable action. A beautiful job, Deal Wilson raises the body up, lets everyone take a look at what one of these outstandingly wild monster trucks are actually made of. This is one fantastic piece of equipment. Deal Wilson, there's a good shot of Deal, makes his home in Winchester, Virginia. Here comes Samson, one back out, Don Maple, Huntsville, Alabama. The beautiful blown Chevrolet truck. Don has put on a show. These guys really put on a tremendous round of competition as they were getting all over the track. There's the twin blown Goliath truck from Ohio. Fantastic shot. What a way to close the program, Bob. It was a wild night here at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, and there's nothing left of the four cars in the middle. Now watch the Virginia Giant. Deal hits the cars. Here's where he clears them. All four tires clearing the ground. Can you believe you can take a 13,000-pound truck like that and actually get that much ground clearance off of it? A beautiful job. These trucks are taking such a beating, and it's putting such a beating on the drivers. They're really doing an outstanding job. Of course, all the safety equipment built on the trucks keeps them in line. A beautiful job tonight. And yeah, what a close to the show here at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You just paid $10,000 for a new pickup. Your neighbor did too. Your neighbor bought a Duraliner. You didn't. Now, which truck do you wish was yours? Without Duraliner? With Duraliner. Duraliner is so tough, it's guaranteed not to crack, split, or become brittle for the life of your truck. See your truck dealer. You're a liner. Call 1-800-D-LINERS. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A bold, rugged, outdoorsy scent. New Desert Spice. Leave it to Sure to add new spice to your life. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A light, baby-fresh fragrance. New powder dry scent. Leave it to Sure to keep you powder dry all day. Down through the years, the big games, the special games, always seem to live on in your memory. The excitement of baseball. It doesn't end when the game ends, and neither does your need to know. That's why so many baseball fans read the Sporting News, America's sports authority for over 100 years. The Sporting News gives you complete, in-depth coverage by more than 40 staff writers reporting right from the scene of the action. The teams, the stars, the strategies, the stats and standings, the pulse-pounding play-by-play excitement, everything you want you'll find right here in the Sporting News. It's great reading, and now you can get in on a great half-price offer. Grab a pencil quick, and here's a friend with all the details. Call now and get 40 issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of $5.45. You'll also get special preview issues at no extra...